Hi, welcome everybody. This is Brad Pilon, and today's a, a very special blog post for me because I'm talking about something very near and dear to my heart, and it's one of those things that I just thought needed it needed a lot of pictures and probably better done in words than in writing. So this is probably one of my first video blog posts. But what I want to talk to you about today is vacations. Because it's vacation time right now in Canada. Uh, where I live, it is cold, it is snowy, and it is dark. I get dark probably around 5 p.m., which is it's pretty rough. So now's the time where most Canadians and even probably most people in the United States as well start thinking about going on a vacation. And I'm talking tropical, lay on a beach somewhere vacation, not take a couple days off of work and hang out and clean up the house type of vacation. Tropical vacations are the kind that, you know, they help you de-stress, relax, and enjoy life. And sadly, this could be one of the only weeks out of 52 weeks in a year that people actually do this. I think the vacations kind of force you into a mindset that's just a complete and utter de-stress. I think vacations are a needed break from everyday routine that, if you can, I'd suggest at, at least once a year. Now, the thing about vacations is that they can be tricky, right? Because people can stress about going on a vacation because they want to be in shape when they go. And this makes sense, right? You paid good money and spent a day of travel getting somewhere warm to lay on a beach, so it makes sense that you'd want to look good while you were there. It's simply more fun to travel when you feel that you're looking at your best. Makes for good photos, too, right? Because when you go on vacation, you take a lot of pictures. You show them to your friends, you show them to your family, and you keep them for a long time. It basically immortalizes how you look in a bathing suit. And if your pictures are really good, eh, probably end up on your Facebook page for all your friends to see, too. So there's so many reasons that people like to get in shape for a vacation. And here's the thing. It takes hard work, but... It's actually worth making getting in shape part of your pre-vacation to-do list. Because after all, I mean, which body would you rather take on vacation? I mean, you're paying a lot of money to go on vacation. You want to look good. Now, here's the really cool part. Is that a vacation in itself is actually an extremely powerful reward to get in shape. So a lot of people like to get in shape to go on vacation. The really cool thing is, is that sometimes booking a vacation is a great way to force yourself to get in shape. You see, a vacation is two of the most important criteria to being a good reward for getting in shape. It's a hard date. I mean, once you booked your flights, you're probably not moving them, right? You probably plan things around your family and, and travel and work, etc. So almost all the time, once you've booked that date, that's when you're going on vacation. The other thing is, it's a big monetary value. It costs money to book a vacation. And money and a hard, fast date are the two things that can really, really help you get your acting gear and book that vacation. So I want to help you get in shape for your vacation. And I'm going to give you five steps to just sort of follow it along the way. Now, step one is really important. It comes right after you book your flights. Step one is setting a realistic goal. See, the two biggest mistakes I see when people are making a transformation, whether it's for a transformation contest or getting in shape for a special event like a wedding or a vacation, is not having a defined goal or any metric for measuring progress. If you're not crystal clear on your goal and how you plan on getting there, you can end up wasting a lot of time and a lot of money and becoming frustrated chasing the wrong goals or using the wrong programs. So things to remember when you're setting your expectations and your goals. One, they got to be realistic, right? So if you've booked a vacation from two weeks from now, don't tell yourself you're going to lose 60 pounds for your vacation. Just not realistic. I want you to set realistic long-term goals. And I want you to consider making shape goals rather than weight loss goals. Because body weight is a range. It's not a hard, fast number. I mean, your body weight is going to go, it's going to fluctuate up or down three, five, even more pounds per day, just depending on how much food you ate, how much water you drank, whether or not you were fasting, those sorts of things. So concentrate on really changing the shape of your body. Now, obviously, to do that, you're going to have to lose weight. But I always find it funny when people sort of set a, a weight goal well, weight, losing weight is the process. It shouldn't be the end goal. The end goal should be creating a beautiful shape. So create a shape goal. You know, so maybe a, a waist circumference or a chest circumference, you know, inches lost off your thighs, that sort of thing. And be very aware of how much time you have. An optimistic goal would be one or two pounds a week as your weight loss goal. And you remember, again, you're not solely focusing on weight loss as much as I want you to focus on changing your shape. I also want you to remember that height matters. It's very different if you're trying to lose weight if you're five foot three as opposed to if you're six foot four. People who are smaller lose weight slower, 
but don't worry because it still has the same effect. That the percentage of overall weight loss, the percentage of body fat loss, you're still doing very well. Just as someone who's six foot four probably carries weight differently than someone who's five foot three. So always remember your height. And also remember to never compare yourself to somebody else because, again, every body is different including your height, including your shape, how you carry fat, etc. So don't get caught up comparing yourself to the Hollywood celebrities or that sort of thing. So key things to remember, set realistic goals, concentrate on changing your shape, not hitting a predetermined weight. And remember that body weight is a range, not a hard, fast number. So while you're dieting and trying to lose weight and change the shape of your body, if occasionally your weight goes up a little bit, don't freak out. This is natural. What you're looking for is the overall trend of weight going down. And just remember, height matters. All right, so you set your goals. Now I want you to get on to step two. Step two is getting ready to diet and eat less. And this is super important, but really nobody seems to ever do this. Everybody I talk to does just about the opposite, right? They just dump, jump right into their diet. Or they plan their diet without making these very important considerations. What I want you to do, and you can do it right now, is I want you to make three lists. I want you to write them down on paper, in hand, not doing them on your computer, but actually really planning things out. I want you to make a list of your hot button foods. These are foods that if you have around the house, or the foods that you're exposed to, you just know that they're going to cause you to overeat. They may be your favorite foods. They don't necessarily have to be a dessert. They can be a snack. They can be crackers and cheese, that sort of thing. But I want you to write them down. I want you to be honest with yourself and say, you know, what foods... Do I have a tendency to overeat? What are the foods I really enjoy eating and when I get going, I eat a lot of them? Next, I want you to write down a list of your can't do without foods. And again, be honest. You know, don't be a superhero. Don't be a hero. Right? Write down the foods you're not prepared to give up to lose weight. It, it might be chocolate. It might be craft dinner. right? Or it might be something completely different that I've missed. Toast or something along those lines. There's no point in giving up the foods you can't do without because you're just going to sabotage your own diet. Again, write these out in hand on paper. The list of foods you just can't do without because what I want you to do is incorporate these into your weight loss diet. Again, absolutely no reason to eliminate them, especially if they're the foods that you absolutely need to have on a daily basis. Coffee would be a great example. Next, I want you to write a list of foods you can do without. These are foods that you probably have on a regular basis that when you stop and think about it, you really don't need, right? So it's the, the side of fries, or it's the, you know, making a serious thought that, okay, I don't need a large coffee, it could be a medium coffee, or it could be entirely, I just don't need breakfast, right? I want you to think about the foods you, eh, couldn't care less if they maybe weren't available for you to you for the next six to eight weeks or however long you have. Write these three lists out. Now, you're going to have to revisit them every couple of weeks because things may change, right? Something you thought was a can't do without food, after having it for a couple of weeks straight, you may think, you know what, I didn't want to break from that. And something you thought was a can do without food, turns out might have been a can't do without food. But by writing these lists out, you empower yourself to make sure the diet you create incorporates your personality, your likes and dislikes. If you just do some cookie cutter diet program you find off the net, you know, that tells you the list of foods you can and can't have. It doesn't take into account your own personal tastes. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Before you do anything else, write out these lists. Step three. Okay, now we get ready to eat less. We prepare ourselves for the idea that we're going to be eating less. For, for the next couple of weeks while you're getting ready for your vacation, you're eating less than you normally do. You're eating less than you'd like to eat. You're going to do your best to eat less while doing your best, if I can say that any more times, <laughs> to avoid gimmicks and fad eating. I want you to revisit those lists you made previously, and I want you to make sure you're getting in your can't-do-without-foods, maybe just less portions than you normally would or less often. I want you to make sure you're omitting the foods you can do without, so if they are things you don't really care about, why are you eating them? And I want you to just be, always be aware of your hot button foods. Make sure you're not setting yourself up for some sort of eating disaster by you know, getting into the crackers and cheese or bagels and cream cheese, whatever your hot button may be. I want you to be flexible. Right? Your goal is to eat less. There's going to be some circumstances where you're going to have to eat. Neighbors invite you over for dinner. You, know, you don't want to go over and in, insult them if they cooked an amazing roast beef and you're just having salad. Right? You always want to be flexible. Except that slip-ups might happen. Now, if you go to your kid's birthday party and all of a sudden there's cake out and you end up having a piece of cake, don't feel guilty. 
don't stress out, accept things, these things are going to happen, and just do your best to continue to eat less. A really effective way of eating less, in my opinion, is uh, give intermittent fasting a go. Obviously, I'm biased. I wrote a book on it. But if you're interested, check out Eat, Stop, Eat. You can find it anywhere on this site. And uh, consider giving it a try. It's a really effective way to help you eat less. All right, so we've got eating less covered. You know you're going to do it. I don't want you following any crazy diet. But I also just, you know, work with what's comfortable for you. If all your can can do without foods happen to be carb foods, then hey, fine, go low carb. If they weren't, then don't force yourself into eating situations that's going to set you up for disaster. But I do want you to make sure you know that whatever you're going to be doing is going to be less than what you probably ate today. All right, step four. Get a workout program. Very, very important. Almost any diet, a good effective diet, will take care of helping you to lose weight. To make sure that weight that you're losing is body fat and to make sure there's some shape underneath that weight, you have to follow some sort of weight training program. Me personally, I recommend the Venus Index workout or the Adonis Effect workout. Now remember, I'm telling you to go and work out, but not for calorie burning. Rather, I want you to shape your body with your workouts. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people are trying to diet down, especially for a vacation, is doing too much cardio and ab training, not enough whole body resistance training. Cardio is great if you enjoy it. It's great if you use it as a mental break or you know some sort of stress relief. But in general, the weight loss returns on cardio is fairly poor. You have to do a decent amount of cardio. You have to commit yourself to an hour or two in the gym to get effects from cardio alone. And since you're already creating a calorie deficit through your diet, you can get away with using that time in the gym to work on your muscles to create the shape that you want to have once you get rid of your body fat. Now, most people get up caught up thinking about cardio and ab workouts especially and they think that's all they need to do to get in shape. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, those two things have very little to do with shape. Right? You're trying to recreate the shape of your body. So eating less and using weight training to create the shape you want to have makes sense. Just sitting there on a, on a treadmill running your brains out and getting off and doing 100 crunches isn't going to do much to reshape your body. Because it's an effect of really w of shaping your muscles. Now, you need to do some form of resistance training, which is why I recommend going out and finding a weight training program. Almost every weight training program online or on net will come with exercise descriptions, ex exercise examples, and different ways to set up your workout. It makes it very mindless. You just pick a workout that you, looks like you one you might like, and you follow it. Don't worry about bulking up. From doing resistance training so specifically for the ladies uh, it's it's very difficult to add a large amount of muscle mass from weight training to be perfectly honest it's even difficult for us guys so I wouldn't worry about that too much if properly done resistance training can help you build an amazing body guy or girl so step four get a workout program follow workout program step five and this is your last step is knowing yourself you're probably going to have to drop a little more weight than you think you might to achieve the look you're after. Right? That's why I want you to always go for a shape and not some end goal weight. I want you to avoid comparing yourself to others and only compare yourself to, to you. And this allows you to own your own goals. Instead of just using the scale, I want you to always also use tape measure. And I want you to take some basic measurements of your body. I want you to measure your waist, your hips, your thighs, and your shoulders. So not only around your chest, but around both shoulders. I want you to use this as a way to track how well you're changing the shape of your body. Ideally, you should lose the most inches off of your waist and your hips. Your shoulders should stay, they, you know, you may lose some size off your shoulders, but it should always be to a lesser degree than what you're losing off of your waist and hips. This lets you know that what you're losing is majority of it is going to be body fat. Now, by doing this and combining this with also measuring your weight to make sure that in fact you are losing weight and, and thus not eating too much, it becomes a very, very effective way at transforming your body. And this is probably what most people forget. Most people always just look at the scale and never take the five seconds out of their day to make a couple measurements. So if you don't have a nice, easy tape measure, grab one. They're not expensive, and they're a very, very effective way at making sure you're moving towards your target. All right, so that's it. What I want to remind you mostly is to start off by making that list. 
right? Those lists of hot button foods, can't do without foods, can do without foods. Once you've written those lists down, I want you to consider ways that you're about to eat less, whether it's intermittent fasting, whether it's some other diet, just find a way that's comfortable to eat less while taking into account your can do without foods and your can't do without foods. Next, I want you to find a workout routine. I want you to get a workout routine that fits your goals and I want you to stick with it. Then lastly, I want you to track not only your weight, but your measurements. And I want you to always remember that you're aiming to change the shape of your body, not just lose weight. Lastly, I want to remind you, don't let your goals get hijacked. All right, so if you're trying to get in shape for a vacation, and then all of a sudden you read a really awesome article about you know, how the deadlift is the king of exercises. I don't want you four weeks into getting ready for a vacation to start trying to become a deadlift expert. Stick with your vision, stick with your goals, and get in shape for vacation. And I guess the last thing I could recommend is, uh, hey, book a vacation. It is a fantastic way to get in shape, and it's also a fantastic reward for getting in shape. All right, so that's Brad Pilon, and that's today's blog post for getting in shape and using vacations as a tool to get you in shape.